That big yellow thing in the sky's back. Better make the most of it. Now in my haste to get out, obviously I neglected to introduce this bike, but that's because I really wanted to use the sun, it ain't there very often. So let me do that now. It is a 2004 Honda CB600F Hornet. It is mine and you can pick these up for about two, two and a half thousand pounds at this age. They've been out for about 18 years. There is not a lot we don't know about the Hornet, but probably the most useful resource is the combined experience of thousands of owners to see what it's like to live with. The Hornet first came out in 98, sparring some minor changes every two years. It remained pretty much the same until 2006. 2000, they fitted it with a 17 inch front wheel and improved the brakes, brakes marginally, so it's good to get something this side of 2000. Don't tell this one, cover your ears baby. But in 2005, that's my favorite version. They gave it inverted anodized forks and a digital speedometer. Like I say, that is my favorite. Discontinued in 2006, they reintroduced it in 2007, completely revitalized. It's middleweight naked. In that category, it's traditionally been compared to things like the Suzuki Bandit, Yamaha Phaser, and to a certain extent, the Ducati Monster. And in that comparison, it actually fares pretty well, takes the middle ground on most things you want to measure it by. It comes out best specifically on power, with 97 brake horsepower, 47 foot-pounds of torque, and it comes out worse for economy with 41 miles per gallon, but not by huge margins in either regard. If I had to pick a particular strength for the Hornet, it would be reliability. If you're in a city, you will see a lot of these being driven by commuters and dispatch riders, and whilst there are undoubtedly a few reasons for that, one of them definitely is reliability. If you run this every single day, you will find when you get to it, it will start for you first time. And the closest thing to a common fault, really, is the cam chain tensioner. It's the noisy little beggar down to the right-hand side there, very easy to spot. Basically, start the bike up, you'll hear a rattling, ticking noise down on the right. If once the bike is warm, that rattling, ticking noise disappears or dissipates somewhat, then you're pretty much golden, I would say. Sticking with the positives, the Hornet is particularly comfortable. Owes a lot of that to the super soft suspension. Some do make the comment that it's a little bit too soft and a lot of people do like to change that for themselves, their own personal choice. It also has a big old comfy seat, which I very much appreciate. I appreciate not slamming my junk into the tank each and every speed bump. The more sadomasochistic amongst you might miss that. I'm not here to judge, it's just a fact. It's also not the tallest of bikes, but actually it's got quite a comfortable leg position. 790 millimeters, but you will find upon riding it that your knees don't hurt nearly half as much. Again, it's all down to taste. Some people have likened this to driving a sofa, which is a fair point. But you know what? I quite like my sofa, and if my sofa did 140 miles an hour, then I'd probably commute to work on that. But it doesn't, so I'll stick to this. Now, speaking of 140 miles an hour, apparently that is what this bike will do on paper. And I say apparently not just because it's illegal and obviously I haven't tried it, but if you can get this bike to 140 miles an hour, then I would love to meet you and give you a slow clap and a pat on the back. Definitely not shake your hand because you must have a prodigious grip to get to that speed. Really, being a naked sports bike it gets most of its charm from just cruising around at 60, 70 miles an hour, having a blast. What we have though, as far as the engine goes, is a differently tuned or down tuned Honda CBR600 engine. It's modified to give it more torque in the mid range, which is nice and usable around town, but it is an inline four, so it revs nice and high. 15,000 on the clock, 13,000 red line, starts to get fun around 7,000. If you really want to reward yourself, they'll hold on to 11,000 because that's what actually makes peak torque. I quite like the smooth progression of this bike. It winds up nicely and it gets keener the longer you hold on, so you can really hug in on the bike and feel connected. And It doesn't feel like it's gonna punch you off the seat. It has a steel spine frame, which isn't as sure-footed or as rigid as its sporty rivals, but it does the job. And it's got brakes. Wouldn't dwell on those too long, because they're awful. Genuinely, it was one of the big shortfalls of the Hornet when it first came out. People complained, a lot of people complained that the brakes were too soft. It actually has the smallest rear disc out of the category I compared it to earlier with 220 mils. And whilst it has two 296 mil discs on the front, they're not much better. Like I say, it's a big problem. A lot of people complained and a lot of people like to get braided hoses for it to improve stopping power, which of course you can do yourself. 
I can tell you from experience that this thing will give you 100 miles to a full tank, at which point you will need to switch manually to the reserve down on the left hand side here. Fiddly to do in motion, so just don't. You might say it's got a little light there on the dash. You might be like, Tim, I can see an orange light there. There aren't many lights, but there is an orange light saying fuel. Surely that will tell me when I am low on the good stuff. No, no it will not. If that was a little ball charge from the Matrix, I might tell you that there is no light. And I'd be right. Genuinely, just ignore it. Set the trip. When it gets near 100 miles, then you know you need to refuel. The last thing to critique are the looks. And obviously that is very subjective. You will already know whether or not you like this bike and like the look of it. I personally do. I quite like the fact that it looks retro. Often the comment was that they haven't gone far enough to make it look retro in the late 90s, but it is now 12 years old, so it is genuinely retro. It doesn't have to try at that point anymore. I love the single headlight. I like the wide flat tank and stinging rear end to match that Hornet moniker. And I like the fact that it just looks nice and complete. There is no excess to this thing. Nothing looks like it's gonna fall off. The real benefit and bonus though to owning a Hornet is that there is a glut of accessories to buy online and personalize this thing to make it your own. Just to take you through a few of the modifications that have happened to mine. Moving over to the front, what we have is a smoked cowl to take a bit of that wind off your chest. Really, it's there just to look good. It does that job quite nicely. Ignoring these cheap but practical mirrors, we have yellow radiator hoses, which offset nicely against the black bodywork, and some crash bungs essential in a city. Moving around to the back, we have an exhaust, and it is appropriately named Beowulf, because it is here to exact bloody revenge on your eardrums. It's awful. It looks great. Carbon fiber matches the bodywork quite nicely, and actually it's got a cute little hornet etched into the chrome there, which you can just about make out, and it's adorable. But the problem with it is the sound as you're settling around 4,000 revs. It's great if you're holding on to the revs. It's great if you're throttling off to a satisfying raspy pop. It sounds awful if you're sustaining about 4,000 revs, which you will do quite a lot. You'll try and dance around through the gears to get away from that, finding irregular revs, but that becomes really old after a while, trust me. So really, the question still remains, would I recommend this bike to you? Do I love it? No. Do I like it? Yes, I like it a lot. Do I love the fact that it starts first time, never hurts my knees, neck or testicles, and passes cars with time to spare? Absolutely, I do. Do I love the fact that it will match my mood? If I wanna play, it will play. If I wanna cruise lethargically, it will do that also. The problem with it though, is that it is boringly competent. It's just too good. It doesn't really light a fire. Now that sounds like a particularly mean fault to pick it up on, but it is true. Having said that, as I've already mentioned, there are so many options for this bike. You can characterize it and customize it and make it your own. And I think you absolutely should do that. Personalize it, make it yours, and then I think you'll love it.